So, um, of course, you've got to think about your brand uh, when you're going overseas, and, and these uh, are brands we're all familiar with. Uh, and you might be surprised to learn that these are all brands which um, have fallen foul of, uh, of language uh, and translation. Uh, Vauxhall, when they're launching their Nova in uh, the Spanish market, still called it the Nova, which uh, translated directly or literally into doesn't start, wants to go. Uh, it's not a brilliant uh, idea. The Apple launched its MacBook Air, uh, and the idea, uh, the brand was perfectly conceived. Uh, the actual literal translation was perfectly idiotic. Um, the Who, okay, uh, they uh, had an album, Live in Needs, uh, which when translated literally meant reside in Needs, because they translated read it as live in Needs. So they changed the album to Live at Needs. KFC, finger looking good, when translated meant bite your fingers off. And we could go on and on and on. Really, the bottom line is Kylie Minogue's website. So, uh, make sure uh, some retailers, uh, we work across all industries, not just in retail, but I specialise in the retail industry. So, these are some of the, uh, the large brands that we're working with and, uh, and doing good things. In particular, to your sector, retail at MCG, uh, Blackberry, we're, we're doing all their website translation uh, and a couple of other examples. And you see at the beginning there, Nike can see too, it's got a Nike bag, which is good. And uh, I'm going to talk about that now uh, and tell you what we're doing for Nike or Nike, uh, whichever, uh, you, whichever way you want to look at it. I'll have to refer to my notes because uh, uh, I don't want to give you a load of BS. Um, so we do two things for Nike. There's got uh, several websites, as you know now. Now we've got uh, Nike Store uh, and Nike ID. They're the two websites that we manage. Um, it's not just about translating the words, it's not just about uh, changing the English text into Spanish, French or, or any other language for that matter. Incidentally, we do cover 150 languages uh, in total. Um, it's all about localising. So a good example is if you go on to nikestore.com uh, or .co.uk rather, you'll see a picture of the England team, Wayne Moody wears England shirt, etc. However, if you go on to the French website, you'll see a picture of Thierry Henry, and it's all to do with the current World Cup team, of course. Um, what we were able to do for them was obviously be essentially a one-stop shop. So Nike came, to, came on board with us uh, and we were um, able to simplify the whole process. The poor product, project manager would send this stuff around, get it all back, realise that there were some problems with some of the text, send it all back out again, get it all back and then upload it to the website. So it was costly in terms of time, uh, people's you know, not there to do that, it's not their daily job. Um, and of course you're losing our consistency and it's costing a lot of money as well. They're paying different rates in different countries to different companies. Uh, we were able to simplify that and one of the ways we were able to simplify it is the, by the use of what we've got. Uh, it's called TalkBase.net. Now this is a customer interface, so Nike use this, they absolutely love it. They can upload their English document into this uh, system, into this portal. We'll uh, send, it, send it around, uh, get it translated and uh, the marketing manager in the UK just gets an email saying this is ready for uh, for review. The other benefit is a thing called translation memory. So uh, the more they do with us, uh, so the phrase just do it, for example, once translated, it doesn't have to be translated again. The system knows all the jobs that they've done previously um, and it can say, actually, you translated something very similar in the past. And in this 2,000 word document uh, of it, there's only 50 new words. And they only pay for the 15 new words, uh, the, the new red word rates. Everything else they get a much discounted rate, up to 66%. So actually, uh, there's a huge cost saving benefit as well. The last uh, project for I'll we'll continue to work with, as seen on screen.com, uh, uh, which I'm sure you're all familiar with. And just an interesting statistic that there are actually 1.67 billion internet users worldwide, and only 30% of those users have English as the first language. Um, so uh, what as, as seen on screen.com uh, wanted to do with us was to look how they could uh, increase their market presence in overseas markets. So we did a huge um, piece of SEO and pay-per-click uh, work for them. So we did things like multilingual keyword research. And a great example of this is uh, product descriptions. So for example, uh, in the UK website that had drain pipe jeans. Okay, so anybody who, we just translated that literally uh, in the uh, German's Google engine, get a load of guttering companies for example, drain pipe jeans didn't translate literally. 
by using fashion experts, retail experts in Germany to conduct the translations to understand the market uh, and what it is they're trying to achieve. We're able to offer alternative suggestions so that you are going to appear in the top of the rankings. So the multilingual pay-per-click campaign that I've seen on screen, um, and this is this has really increased their sales. It's been a huge success for them, uh, and really got them up in the, the Google rankings in their case because it's European based. And finally, I just want to finish with a quote from William Brandt, German Chancellor. And I think just to have your website in English and assume that everybody else is going to buy from it uh, is a little bit. Uh, you know, if, you, if you want to communicate and you know, target customers, then you really do uh, need to speak their language and make sure that you're speaking in a way that's professional, it's consistent with your brand, um, and sending out the right message.